Welcome to Geography Samachit Syllabus of Tamil Nadu. Class 8 Geography, Lesson 3, Hydrologic Cycle, Part 2. In today's class, let us learn about the components of water cycle. There are six main components in the hydrologic cycle. Evapotranspiration, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, percolation, and runoff. The first component is evapotranspiration. In the previous class, we learned what is evaporation and what is transpiration. Evaporation is nothing but the changing of water into water vapor. That is, the conversion of liquid water into gaseous form is called as evaporation. What is transpiration? The leaves of trees and plants, they also responsible for evaporation. The roots of the plants and trees, they absorb water and they give out water vapor through the pores of the leaves. That is called as transpiration. It is evapotranspiration is defined as the total loss of water from the earth through the evaporation from the surface water bodies and the transpiration from the vegetation. In cropped areas, it is difficult to determine the amount of evaporation and transpiration separately. So collectively, it is called as evapotranspiration. So what is evapotranspiration? Transpiration plus evaporation is called as evapotranspiration. Evaporation refers to the process in which the liquid form of water changes into gaseous form. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius temperature, but it actually begins to evaporate at zero degrees Celsius and the process takes place very slowly. Temperature is the prime element which affects the rate of evaporation. There is a positive relationship between these two variables. Aerial extent of surface water, wind, and the atmospheric humidity or the other variables that affect the rate of evaporation. So when the temperature is high, the rate of evaporation will also be high. Many studies reveal that oceans, seas, lakes, and rivers provide nearly 90% of the moisture in the atmosphere through evaporation, and the remaining 10% is contributed by plants through transpiration. The rate of evaporation increases with increase in wind speed. So during windy days, you would have observed when you dry out our wet clothes during the windy days, they get dry very fastly. So when the speed of the wind is high, the rate of evaporation is also high. And hot, increase in temperature. During hot and sunny days also, our clothes get dry very fastly. Increase in temperature will also result in high rate of evaporation. Decrease in humidity. So already when there is humidity in the atmosphere, it is difficult for the atmosphere to absorb more water from the earth's surface. So increase in humidity decreases the rate of evaporation. See, when already you have a wet cloth in your hand, you cannot wipe out water that is spilt on the earth with the wet cloth. You can wipe out the draw, water dropped or spilt on the earth on the floor only with a dry piece of cloth. Like that, when already the atmosphere has water vapor, already when it is high humid, it cannot evaporate more water from the water body. So increase in humidity decreases the rate of evaporation. Increase in aerial extent of surface water bodies also increases the rate of evaporation. So the rate of evaporation increases with increase in wind speed, increase in temperature, decrease in humidity, and increase in aerial extent of surface water bodies. On a global scale, the amount of water gets evaporated as the same amount as the amount of water delivered to Earth as precipitation. This process varies geographically as the evaporation is more prevalent over the oceans than precipitation. Why? Over the land. Precipitation routinely exceeds evaporation. That is, this process varies geographically, that is from area to area. As the evaporation is more prevalent over the oceans than precipitation. So, in the 
ocean surface, the surface on the earth where there are oceans, the rate of evaporation is very high. But the precipitation is high only over the land and not over the oceans. The rate of evaporation is low during the periods of calm winds than during windy times. When the air is calm, evaporated water tends to stay close to the water body. During windy, the water vapor is driven away and is replaced by dry air, which facilitates additional evaporation. Transpiration refers to the process by which the water content in the plants are released into atmosphere in the form of water vapor. Much of the water taken up by the plants is released through transpiration. The rate of transpiration is also affected by the temperature, wind, and humidity. The soil, water content, and the ability of the soil to conduct water to the roots, the nature of the plant parts, including the bugs and leaves, also determine the rate of transpiration. In case of agriculture, the crop characteristics, its environment, and cultivation practices affect the transpiration process. Condensation. What is condensation? Gaseous form of water changing into liquid is called as condensation. Condensation generally occurs in the atmosphere. When, so mostly the condensation occurs in the atmosphere and sometimes condensation also occurs on the surface of the earth, which we will be studying later. So generally the condensation occurs in the atmosphere when warm air rises, cools and loses its capacity to hold water vapor. As a result, Excess water vapor condenses to form cloud droplets. Condensation is responsible for the formation of clouds. These clouds produce precipitation, which is the primary route for water to return to the Earth's surface in water cycle. Condensation is the opposite of evaporation. Evaporation, water changing into gaseous form. Condensation, the water vapor converting into water. So condensation, the water vapor that evaporates, gets cooled in the air and turns back to liquid. These droplets form clouds and this is known as condensation. Now let us see the different forms of condensation. Dew. It is a water droplet formed by the condensation of water vapor on a relatively cold surface of an object. It forms when the temperature of an object drops below the dew point temperature. So what is dew? Dew is the moisture that forms as a result of condensation. Condensation is a process a material undergoes as it changes from a gas to a liquid. Dew is a result of water changing from a vapor to a liquid, but it does not happen in the atmosphere. It happens on the Earth's surface. Dew forms as temperature drop and objects cool down. So the objects on our Earth, because of the decrease in the temperature, they get cooled down. If the object becomes cool enough, the air around the object will also cool. Colder air is less able to hold water vapor than warm air. And this forces the water vapor in the air around the cooling objects to condense. When condensation happens, small water droplets form dew. When you pour chilled water, into a glass tumbler, you can see the tiny droplets of water outside the glass. That is the example of this dew. Frost. The ice crystals formed by the deposition of water vapor on a relatively cold surface of an object is known as frost. So instead of water drops, the further low decrease in temperature makes the water droplets to freeze and that is called as frost. So the ice crystals formed by the deposition of water vapor on relatively cold surface of an object is known as frost. It forms when the temperature of an object drops below the freezing point of temperature. So fog is, dew is formed when the temperature of the object drops below the dew point temperature, whereas the frost is formed when the temperature of an object drops below the freezing point of the temperature. Fog. 
Fog is a suspended tiny water droplets or ice crystals in an air layer next to the Earth's surface that reduces our vision or visibility to 1000 meters or lower. For aviation purposes, the criteria for fog is 10 kilometers or less. Fog forms when the difference between air temperature and dew point is less than 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 2.5 degrees Celsius. When water vapor condenses, it turns into tiny droplets of varying concentration in the air. Mist. Mist is tiny droplets of water hanging in the air. These droplets form when the water vapor in the air is rapidly cooled, causing it to change from invisible gas to tiny visible water droplets. Mist is less dense than fog. Actually, fog and mist are same, but mist is less dense, whereas fog is denser than the mist. Clouds. Clouds consist of tiny water droplets or ice particles, which are so small and light in weight. Clouds are formed by microscopic drops of water or by small ice crystals. The size of droplets generally range from a couple of microns to 100 microns. This is the limit beyond which the cloud drops become raindrops. So here, this is the ground. And because of the sun's heat, the warm ground gets heated and the air above the ground also gets heated. It expands and it rises. The warm air rises now. And as the altitude increases, the temperature decreases, we all know. So when the temperature decreases, the rising warm air gets cooled. And because of this rising and cooling, the condensing of air parcel happens. And the further rise, make much more air puzzles to form inside the parcel that is here. And when it becomes poor and tight, the clouds are formed. And when the clouds cannot hold much more water particles, they burst and fall down as precipitation. Condensation occurs when the air gets saturated. Warm air can hold more water vapor than cool air. Saturation occurs when the temperature drops down. If you find this video useful, like my video, give your feedback in the comments section, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching.